Howdy, I'm Jim from Left Wing Libertarian. Good day, mate. I am Anna from BeautyGirlsMom.com. So today we're going to talk about wedding receptions. Yay! One of the world's most famous wedding reception locations is right around the corner from us in Woodstown, New Jersey. Cowtown Rodeo. It's not a place or a wedding reception. Yes, it is. Because at Cowtown Rodeo, you can set up a really nice white tent on the Cowtown Rodeo grounds and have world famous barbecue. You can actually have people in your party uh, get on a mechanical bull. They have bull rides, all kinds of things. Barbecue, you can have bridesmaids not wearing those goofy, uncomfortable shoes that women wear. They could be wearing comfortable cowgirl boots. You could have groomsmen in old western style tuxedos with the, the bolero tie thing across. The, so you can go all out with a country and western themed wedding at Cowtown Rodeo. Do you know for a fact that you can have a wedding reception at Cowtown Rodeo? I called them and was not told no. Because they didn't answer the phone. Uh, that's besides the point. <laughs> um, so yeah. over the next five to ten years, we have children who might want to get married. Yes. Yes, we okay. do. So what's the most important thing to do when planning for a wedding reception? Well, and we're only talking about the reception. We're not talking about, you know, the religious ceremony or, you know, whatever or type secular. of ceremony you want. Yeah, we're talking about the part where dad writes the check and dad has ultimate say. I think the biggest consideration, the very first thing you should do when you start planning your reception is to come up with a realistic guest list. Because if you have a champagne taste, but you have to accommodate 200 people, that champagne might be Kool-Aid at a paper cup. You know, you want to be able to <clears throat> make sure that you have all the people that you love, all the people that love you. You want to make sure that you're surrounded by those people on that special day. Um, but you want to be able to have a nice party. This so. reminds me of that releasing of the doves. What's that comedian from the Family Feud? The host on Family Feud? Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. has a joke about he went to a wedding with the uh, poor side of his family, and they announced Step Outside for the releasing of the doves. And it was a cage that had a chicken in it and a pigeon. <laughs> Just, you know. But they called it releasing of the doves. Well, if that's what you have to do... <laughs> If your budget calls for releasing a chicken, you know, no, I think, okay, unless you have in your head, I want to have a huge fancy dinner and your father pulls out his checkbook and says, okay, you can have a huge fancy dinner at this location, but you can only invite 30 people. Okay, but that's how we did our wedding. We sat down and we picked a venue and we had a budget. And based upon that, we came up with a per head cost. And we paid for a core group of people. And then we went to the extended parents and said, if you want to invite your friends, coworkers, here's how much you could donate to help us with the wedding. We don't want a blank check. We don't want anything. It's just, here you go. 85 was, 80, it was 110 or head, whatever the number was. And said, if you want to invite 10 people, just multiply it by that and just give us that amount. We covered everything else. Yes, but what we did is we figured out who we needed to invite to if, this wedding. if the family couldn't pay anything. And then chose our venue. Yes. So we looked at who was going to be invited to this wedding and then chose our venue and then went to all of the respective parents because, again, both of us came from divorced families. So it was four sets of parents. And we said, this is how much per person this wedding is going to cost. You and I covered the X core. number of people. We covered yeah. our siblings, our parents, our grandparents, our aunts and uncles. You know, and our friends, and then if our parents wanted to invite anybody outside that, extended relatives, cousins, anybody like that, then they could pay Yeah, for like them. we went to my father and I said, here's the cost, and he said, well, here's the money, and started counting out like two grand in cash. And I said, well, how many people do you want to invite? All the co-workers from work, people from the bar, people from you know? And he said, no, go upgrade your package, have the video guy, and what did my father make us get? The big giant pictures that we've been hanging on the wall and had them with us ever since the day we were married. Yeah. And we have them as a memory of our wedding day. Yeah. My father's answer was, get that memory, Instead of this. Did you just tap me? Am I rambling? You're off. You're, you're rambling. Okay. Well, I'm talking about wedding and you know, stuff. We're talking about a reception. Okay. Reception. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm back on track now. You're back. You're okay. Back Cowtown Rodeo. Cowtown Rodeo. Okay. So you're going to make a that's, list. That's it. My recommendation when you first, first start planning your wedding reception is to make a list of the people that you want to have there, people that you think you might want to have there but it, you should look at the list realistically and if you have an aunt sally who lives in podunk iowa and she's 97 years old and she's been in a wheelchair for the last 30 years 
she might have to get an invitation because she's your aunt, but you may not have a realistic expectation of her coming to your and, wedding. And by make a list, I mean, when we got married, we did it in Lotus 1, 2, 3. Now do it in Excel. Put down everybody's name, their salutation, their street address, their zip code. Everything that you need to write out your invitations. Don't print them. Write them out. Take the time. I mean, it's a big event. You should write it them is, out. Yeah. But, and then it's also, are they going to attend? They might attend. Yes, they will. They're traveling. They need a hotel. You know, those are all things that you need to know when considering, you know, planning yeah. for your day. Okay, so now you're all done, and you take this file, and you toss it over to the other side of the family, and they fill in their list. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, you got this list of 100, 200, or 40 people. Mm -hmm. My thing is, everybody, well, especially around here for decades, goes to the fire hall. Mm -hmm. It's just... I mean, it's Jersey. It's a very Jersey thing. We have a lot of fire halls because we every little town has its own fire department. One of the ways the fire departments make money is yeah, to have volunteer fire departments. For the volunteer most part. fire departments. One of the ways for them to generate yeah, more income hall. is they rent out their hall. Yeah. So Jersey is is well known for the fire hall weddings. Yeah. We also have a lot of really nice upscale wedding venues in our area. The difference though is you have to check them out because what may have been nice when we got married might be tacky today. I mean, owners change. Might. Even even be the same name but the parents are gone and now the kids are running the business yeah and we've encountered things like that where we have gone to a wedding reception expecting the same caliber of the parent food and, and things that we knew them for yep. only to find out that you know the parents had retired the son and the wife had divorced and they were catering in from yeah. outside <laughs> caterers yeah now you got grandparents off the boat with these outstanding recipes from decades of great food the kids don't even cook it they're bringing in McDonald's and rewrapping it on a yeah. plate you wouldn't know it if you didn't see what was going on behind the kitchen yeah but they charged the same price yeah they did yeah. but again you know look at the number of people that are on your list Look at the number of people that you absolutely want to have around you on your wedding day and then decide what kind of wedding do you want. If you want to have a luau, if you have a guest list of 500 people and you want to have a backyard luau, you could probably swing that. You know, you can, you know, throw another shrimp on the barbie there, cowboy or crocodile dundee, whatever you got to do. You picked out this hat. You should know I what like it is. I like the hat. I like right. that. I'm not okay. saying I don't like the hat. Um, but yeah, if you, if you make a guest list and you determine, no, I have to have all 200 of these people at my wedding and your budget is not going to accommodate 200 people at the nicest restaurant or the fanciest hotel in town, you have to figure out what kind of wedding you are willing to have so that you can have all of those 200 people. You will have brides that say, I only want, you know, the immediate family, closest friends, 30 people, but I want soup to nuts, a seven course meal. I want a live band. I want, you know, the most extravagant event I can have for 30 people. But I think before you can do anything, you really have to look at your guest list and see, okay, where where is reality? How many of these people are coming? How many of these people do I want to invite? We had a band at our wedding. And by a band, I mean a string band. And for those of you who don't know what a string band is, we mean a 60-piece marching band that showed up in two buses. Yes. Okay, they performed at our wedding. Everybody danced. Yes. Okay, very Philly. Very South Philly. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't know what a string band is, you ain't from here. <laughs> You ain't from any neighborhood we know. Sister. But the point is, that string band, or you could have had an extra hour at the reception. Which made that event more memorable? Well, you know, I'm from Philadelphia. I'm a South Philly girl, and all of my family and, and friends from, you know, the Philly neighborhoods were there, and they had a blast. And it's something that I think we'll always remember. We will remember that way longer than we would have remembered an extra hour of everybody you know have an open bar and you know I, I, I think that was a big deal and it here's was. where Cowtown Rodeo and the Luau and two or three hundred guests to me is a better option I think there's two good options there's take 40 people and go on a cruise for a week and there's take 400 people or two or three hundred and go down to Cowtown Rodeo or go down to a park on the river or off the beach and have a Luau with the campfire near the water and the pig roast and the whole thing and the music and the bands and the chairs. Those two extremes are a small number of people and a wonderfully intimate time where you do a lot of stuff or everybody and their brother and sister. And you have as much of a time as you can and people show up in either blue jeans and chambray shirts and their cowboy hats and belt buckles or they show up in dockers and a Hawaiian shirt. Everybody's comfortable and they have a great time. That might be the chaplain in me speaking, but I would rather have either of those ends than the option in the middle.
Because the option in the middle seems like you have to cut your guest list and you have to cut down the fanciness of the affair you have. Well, and again, that's why it's important to see how many people are on the guest list. You know, how many people, let's, let's start, this is how I, I would advise brides to do it. Budget first. Let's start looking at the list of everybody you think you might want to, have to, need to invite. And that might include distant relatives that you don't normally see unless it's a wedding or a funeral. Um, we got family in Massachusetts and Denver. They ain't coming, but we're going to invite them. Co-workers of your parents, you know, that they worked with for, for decades, possibly. Yep. You know, those are people that might be on the I have to invite those list. Yeah. But once you have this list, what kind of wedding do you want? Now, if we're you not don't saying... want to have a backyard barbecue and that's, you know, what this guest list is saying then you have to start cutting people off the Yeah, list. but we're not saying, though, your co-workers um, from 20 years ago are a bad thing to have on the list. The point is, if they're worthy of being on the list, they're worthy. Of, they all stand on their own merit. I don't think where you see people having conversations like, oh, we have to cut the guest list down by 20 people. Who do we get rid of? My no, thinking think is, you should cut out your shrimp cocktail and have 20 more people. Uh, well, again, I think that's the conversation people have all the time. I want 200 people at my wedding. Okay, we can't afford 200 people. So let's have 200 people, but we do it in the backyard. Well, I don't want it in the backyard. I want it at this restaurant. Then you can have 100 people at this restaurant, but we can't do 200. I think that's what families, brides, and grooms have to sit down, and that's that's the first negotiation. I don't care what you've gone through as a, as a dating couple or as an engaged couple. When you have to sit down and you have to, I mean, you're talking finances, you're talking families, you know, you're, you're talking, talking other people's feelings. money and you're talking my other people's money. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's... You know, and there are people who for, you know, might have 20 people on their list. They're still not having champagne and caviar. They're still having the backyard barbecue. That's what their budget is. So you have to look at that guest list before you do anything and determine... I have this many people that are absolutely must invites to my wedding. What kind of wedding can I afford with this number of people? And that's, I think, where you so really, to start. So really what you're saying is your first thing shouldn't be your guest list. Your first, thing, your first thing should be your wish list. And then whatever the wish list comes out to, you should see where reality comes in. Well, and the reality list, should make your guest the list. The guest list, what kind of wedding can we afford with this number of people? You know, do you want to... Do you want to have just immediate family and friends because you have a certain taste in, in what your wedding should look like? But that spreadsheet should be all full before you ever go out looking at venues. I absolutely think so, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, how can you go to a venue and really compare it if you don't, you know, well, yeah. we might have 50, we might have 500, I don't know. You know, you're not focused on what you're looking at and what you want to do. Yeah. So we will, over the next uh, couple of months, we are going to try Five to ten years. Five to ten years because we have three daughters. Yeah. Um, we are going to do a couple of wedding videos. We're going to talk about the things that are important, what you might want to have at your wedding, how you go about planning. Next week we'll be talking about the account that I set up at Fidelity. I'm donating $100 every month into the account to pay for weddings. I figure by five to ten years with interest we'll be covered. You know, I'm planning ahead. He's planning ahead. Um, so if you'd like to subscribe and see more information about what we discuss over the next couple months about weddings, please hit the button wherever it appears on your screen. And if you and think Cowtown Rodeo was a damn good idea, partner, please leave it right in the messages so that he feels good about himself. I am Anna from BeautyGirlsMom.com. We'll see you real soon.